First up, of course, is to figure out which you prefer between AMD or Intel, right? Wrong! We do not shop by brand. We shop by what delivers us the best performance, features, and quality for the money we're spending. And just to make this crystal clear, AMD and Intel both make extremely high quality microprocessors. So let's move on to that other stuff. Step one, if you already have your PC and you're upgrading is to make sure you're shopping for CPUs that actually fit in the fracking motherboard that you're planning to use. Don't feel bad about needing to look it up. Intel, for example, maintains current generation products across two different physical sockets at any given time and often has a trailing older socket along with more complex electrical incompatibilities. So go ahead, ask a friend. Next step is to look at what delivers more bang for your buck with in your target budget. Performance used to be simple. The younger viewers may be surprised to hear that not only did AMD and Intel CPUs used to perform the same clock for clock, but they even fit into the same motherboards at one point. Comparisons were easy. Whoever had the faster clock speed was faster, and the megahertz war was born. Then everything started changing because the megahertz or gigahertz or frequency of a CPU became no longer any more meaningful than gauging the performance of a car by how many RPMs the engine spins at. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a useful metric somewhat, but only if we have other information at the same time. So let's talk about this other information. Number one, we need to know how much work a CPU can perform with each of those cycles, how many instructions per clock it can perform. If CPU A ran at two gigahertz, and did one instruction per cycle, and CPU B ran at one gigahertz and did two instructions per cycle, then they actually do the exact same amount of work. So the only way to measure which one is really better is by running real world tests. But just like putting a car on a dyno and measuring peak horsepower, running one test or one benchmark isn't the be all and end all of CPU performance either. Modern CPUs have multiple processing cores inside them. And while some benchmarks will measure the top speed of a single core with more power redirected to it in a turbo mode, other benchmarks will tell us more about how that CPU behaves with a heavier load that's spread across all of the processing cores, a multi-threaded test and other tests will tell us, you know, if the CPU you has enough cash to keep up with a particular workload. In a perfect world, you want to find websites that test the exact applications you're using most frequently so you know exactly what you're getting and that's the only way to figure it out. But let's continue the car analogy. For some people, it isn't just about how fast you go. What about creature comforts like air conditioning and cruise control? CPU reviews from reputable sites like Tech Report, Hardware Connects, and PC Perspective will give you a rundown of other important information like power consumption, heat output, security features, maximum supported memory, expected overclocking limits for tweakers, and so much more. And once you've got all of that information, you are ready to make a non-fanboy-tastic decision about what gives you the best value for your money before plunking down your hard-earned cashola. But if all that sounded like way too much work, and at this point you're just kind of sitting here going, oh, I can't believe I'm watching this. Not to worry, head over to linustechtips.com and post asking for a recommendation in the CPU section. I personally guarantee you'll get the help you need. We've got an awesome community over there. Speaking of awesome communities, audible.com is TechQuickie's longest running sponsor. And without our community members heading over to audible.com slash TechQuickie when they get a hankering for an audiobook, well, I, be I bet they wouldn't want to do that anymore. An Audible membership is worth checking out for a few reasons, guys. Number one is that by signing up for the monthly service, you get their great listen guarantee for hassle-free exchanges in case you pick up My Life as a White Trash Zombie by Diane Rowland and you meant to get Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen. Don't worry, you can exchange it. And the other big one for me is that aside from the one audiobook included per month, you get a discount on additional ones as part of your membership. But wait, there's more, hold on. The first one is free with a new membership, so head over to audible.com slash techquickie and check it out today. You'll love it. And if you don't, you can cancel the membership with no hassle anyway. That's yet another benefit. See, I threw in that other benefit. So what have you got to lose except that disgusting growth on your forehead, Joe? Don't have one? That's what I thought. And I guess there's no excuse. Guys, thank you for checking out this episode of Fast As Possible. Like and share it if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it just totally sucked. And leave a comment suggesting future episodes of Fast As Possible. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the episodes of Fast As Possible that you suggest. Now I'm going to just move fast and wildly for a little bit to wreak havoc on my editors who are trying to green screen this. Ha!
I think we're done here.